Welcome back my friends, how's everybody doing? I hope everyone had a great week. In this video we are going semi-modern again to work on a AGP test system. Last week Nathan from Pixel Pipes announced the GPU June event. If you want to know more about that you can click on the card above me. And to get ready to make GPU videos I'm going to need a AGP test system. So in this video that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to build a universal AGP test system. First thing I want to do is test the combo I got for the AGP test system and see if it works. I don't want to put any energy in this project if the base system doesn't work. So let's get a video card. We'll use this Radeon 9200 that recently arrived and the PSU I pulled from the editing PC a while ago and that should be fine. So turning on the system for the first time, a cloud of dust lifts off from the fan and the system turns on without any issues. All right, it works. So now we can clean things up and find a home for this system. The case I'm using is one I bought brand new. Here's footage from the day I bought it. I was walking through here and I saw this by the trash can. I'm not sure what it is. I think it's just a case. Wait, Frank. Wait, let me see what it is. That case seems to be in good shape and I kind of want it now. It's got a CD-ROM drive in it. It's a simple, light case that housed a pre-built system from a crappy brand called Megaware. Should do the job just fine after a good cleanup. I did have to swap that CD-ROM drive for an IDE drive, but free drive. Who's complaining? For the motherboard, we already know everything works, so we can remove the memory and the CPU. The motherboard is a beautiful purple ECS P4V MM2 Revision 8.1. It was sold to the value market and it only has two DDR memory slots and a maximum of 266 MHz on the memory. But the main reason for using this motherboard is the universal AGP slot. AGP comes in multiple shapes. It's keyed for different voltages your video card might need. This slot accommodates most, thus it's commonly called the universal slot. The second best feature of this motherboard is of course that it's purple. I love purple PC parts. My purple GeForce 4 4600 Ti will look great on this after it has been cleaned up. Nothing special about this memory and the system will run Windows XP to test later AGP cards so the 512MB we have on the original combo won't be quite enough. Luckily I do have some spare DDR DIMMs so we're gonna upgrade it to the maximum amount of memory this motherboard supports and that will be 2GB that should be enough to run even the later Windows XP games. The CPU is a 2GHz P4, it's actually overkill for Windows 98 although it's not brilliant for Windows XP and I did try to use a 3 GHz Panium 4. More on that after we assemble the system. Alright, so time to assemble and as you can see this case doesn't use standoffs, I find that a bit practical and because I don't usually know the order things go, I had to install the hard drive from the front and on that we're just using a regular spinning disk 200 GB hard drive and that should be quite enough for Windows XP and games. Here's the combination of DIMMs we are going in this build for a total of 2 GB of DDR. And just like that we are now ready to turn the system on and install the OS. So we are going to have two systems in this computer but I don't like to deal with boot managers so we'll see what we're going to do along the way. So right about now was the time I realized I made a mistake by trying to use a 3 GHz Panium 4 with an 800 MHz FSB while this motherboard only goes up to 533 MHz on the front side bus. So in the end, the fastest CPU I have for now will be the 2 GHz Pentium 4 with no hyper threading. But the system is for testing older video cards, so this shouldn't be a problem. While testing different processors, I used this thermal pad sent to me by my great friend Ash Dino from the Retro Machines and Game Enthusiast Discord server. You can find a link to join the Discord server on the video description. To make sure I'm not holding the video cards back, I overclocked the CPU to 2.4 GHz and what? using a previous video that I reviewed the GeForce 4 Ti 4600 with a 3 GHz Pentium 4, I compared the results 
to this system and surprisingly got better results here on the purple system for the GPU. Alright, so this system will be used to test older video cards that are too old even for Windows XP. So we're gonna need to install an older OS as well. I'm not a fan of dual boot, so we're installing Windows 98 on a separate drive and this SD to IDE adapter seems like a good fit. First problem I had is that Windows 98 doesn't like CPUs that run over 2.1 GHz and our P4 is running at 2.4. I could go into the BIOS and fix this by lowering the clock, but I don't want to have to do this every time I switch to Windows 98. So here's my first opportunity to use the flexibility of these SD adapters and copy the fix directly to the Windows folder. Second problem we had is that Windows 98 doesn't like 2 gigabytes of memory either. I looked for a fix, but I couldn't find it. So here we're just gonna have to go ahead and remove one stick of RAM. And now finally we got Windows 98 on the SD card and Windows XP on the hard drive. Test system is done and we shall commemorate by playing some Halo in this wonderful little purple PC with the CRT. I've always liked testing systems with Halo since all the way back in the early 2000s in my days of tech support. Game runs smoothly at 800 by 600. It seems that explosions are the biggest issues for the system, but overall, I'm extremely satisfied and ready for next month. May GPU June cometh upon me. So next month, we're gonna have GPU videos every single week to honor the GPU June event. But that was it for this video. So I hope you got some useful information or at least had some fun. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the bell icon, like the video if you're a cool person that enjoys purple PC hardware, dislike if you're allergic to games that take place in ring worlds, and I'll see you next time.